So in this part of our series of kind of demystifying the decorating techniques, you're going to show us how to actually ice a cake, which I personally, this is one thing that I've never really mastered, and I'm excited that you're going to show us. Well, how to I'm going to show you our technique, which is very smooth. Okay. And if there's any trick, it's we ice it once, refrigerate or freeze until mm -hmm. it firms up, and then do a finishing coat. Okay. I'm going to put two healthy dollops mm. on top. Now, part of what makes this easier is a decorating wheel. Okay. Solid, secure, not too wobbly. It spins. And the other thing is what's called an offset spatula. And use your index finger. And I'll show you. First, we're just going to try to cover the surface area. And then I'm at uh, slightly less than a 45 degree angle. Okay. Okay, you that looked really look easy. easy. You want to try? Yes. So you did, first you kind of smooth it smooth out. Smooth it out, yep. Like this. And then you hold it like I this. I hold it fixed. Exactly. Wow, you're good at this. Well, you're just what are you doing for me. the next two out, uh, two months, <laughs> rather? <laughs> but this is really what you need. Absolutely. So it so allows you. So it's the angle, you... the pressure, and the movement. That's fun. Too. Now we're going to go to the sides. Okay. What I'm doing, fairly thick and only working a small area because there are crumbs. And in this case, it's chocolate on chocolate, so it's not gonna be as visible. Mm -hmm. But if you were using a white frosting on a chocolate cake, crumbs are an issue. Okay, and that's so, the crumb layer. It is. Okay. So that's what we're trying to do, cover. And I'm only working about a two to three inch area with the frosting that I have, and some is excess from the top. You wanna try this? Yeah. Because you're really good at this. <laughs> you really you're are. You're buttering me up. <laughs> and then work it back and forth because initially it doesn't have to be smooth. Once we've covered the outer edge, we're gonna so go around. So when you get this little piece uh -huh. right here. Again, use your index finger. It's a different tool, it's flat. Okay. But apply pressure and hold it okay. steady. So it doesn't have to be, this pass doesn't have to be perfect. No, because right now okay. we're just trying to cover it. We're Got gonna it. frost it twice. One other technique now. This takes a little more skill same offset spatula that we started with and I'm just going to pull it in to the center. Okay. If we wanted to enrobe it, it'd be perfect now. Mm -hmm. But we're going to chill this freezer for five minutes because it's so Oh, just five minutes. Okay. If it's a refrigerator, probably 20 to 30. Okay. You'd do it by touching it. See how that's peaking now? Mm -hmm. You'd want it to be firm. So Got it. We'll put this in and come back in a minute. All right. Now I showed before by pulling my finger up that it was still wet and then took it out of the freezer and it leaves my fingerprint, more or less. So it's Perfect. firm enough to put another coat on. Now, again, we've got the first coat on, so we can drag a little more on this and cover those areas where the cake was showing through. Mm -hmm. All right, so relatively smooth. Too complicated, I can't do it. The kids are bothering me. Yes. So I'm gonna do a whole different technique. I'm putting more frosting on now. I can't do that. So I'm gonna take the back of a spoon and just repeat this pattern on the side. I just want to show awesome. alternative techniques. The frosting needs to be thicker to do this, and it can't be cold, so I have to work fast. I've always to wondered how you this. do that. You just yeah, back use of a, a spoon, spoon, and I'll have you do it with me. Okay. And again, this is where that idea of things in profusion. Tim, you're going to turn me into a baker. Yay! <laughs> this is awesome. That looks fantastic. But see fantastic. how that looks. Yeah, I can't believe and I just did that. that's so simple to do. And if you have kids you want to help in the kitchen, let them help you. A kid would take such great pride in this. And, and that's it's where fun. it begins, the encouragement. All right, so we've got that technique down. Okay. But let's go back to our original. What's important when you're applying any garnish like this is that it's not cold. Okay. it's going to stick better. And then another trick, we're going to put this underneath because a lot of it's going to fall. So it's easier to clean up. Right. And then recycle it as well. And I'm just going to literally press it, see how much falls off into the sides. And these are just crushed up candy canes? Yeah. And again, the kids can help, but you probably need twice as much peppermint candy. Yeah. Because they're going to eat it. That's right. It's inexpensive. And it I is. love that. That it's really, it's very accessible and inexpensive it to is. do something and like I this. And I think it adds a really festive note. Mm -hmm. And again, if the kids help do it, how much fun is that? This is a great way to involve the family in creating these things. It's and fantastic. That's how kids get involved in the kitchen.